Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome back to TMR's Master Advisor Series. Today is April 1st, 2024, which is just wild. They're already in, in, in August. I'm sorry, August, not April. Um, this is episode number 94. We have a travel advisor here today who is going to talk to us about something about building an incredible book of business via YouTube, which is something we've never done before in this series and uh, something we've tried to bring you a few times, but we're unsuccessful. So we're really so happy to be able to do it today. We're so happy to see so many of you out here with us as well. Um, I want to make just a few announcements first, and then I'm going to go ahead and introduce our sponsor. Um, just as always, a couple quick reminders. Just switch into speaker view on your Zoom if you're new here. Um, it's a good tip to sort of get the best meeting experience you can out of this. And then the chat on the bottom right is going to be open as we go along today. I already see Richard left a comment in there, so hello, Richard. Um, any questions, any comments, anything you want to add to the discussion, please go ahead and drop it in the chat. I really love interacting with it as we go along today. So don't be shy. Chat's open. I'm monitor monitoring it. And uh, please don't be shy again. Um, I want to go ahead and drop the link to our YouTube into the chat too right now. Um, that's going to be a good thing to flag opening up just, so just because you'll be able to rewatch this going forward if you do want to. Uh, Rewatch the interview, or if you have to duck out halfway through, we'll have the we'll be hosting the full interview on YouTube sometime later today, early tomorrow morning. Um, that also is a home to all of our other video and audio content, all the past master advisors. Like I mentioned, this is number ninety four, so we've ninety three ones on there already. Uh, a lot of a lot of different topics, a lot of really great travel advisors in there. Um, so go ahead, uh, links in the, in the, in the chat. If you want to subscribe, if you want to like the videos, I always mention that sort of helps us a whole lot, continue to reach more travel advisors. So, uh, link to the link to that YouTube is in there. Yeah. And I know we took a little break in the summer. We're going to be launching our next master advisor either later in August or first week of September. Um, please keep an eye out for, for the invite and uh, the announcement. It'll come soon. We're just finalizing our travel advisor. We're finalizing our guest. Um, but we should have some news really soon. We're really excited about the next one coming up. I think I think you all will like it um, as well. Um, but with that all out of the way, uh, let's go ahead and welcome our sponsor for today's session. I'm so happy to have Stacey Falls, the uh, Associate Vice President of Marketing for Cruise Planners, with us to help us introduce our travel advisor and today's topic. Thanks for having me, Dan and Tom, and welcome um, all you travel advisors to TMR. Very happy to be here. It's a topic that's exciting. Um, I'm live here from our home office in Coral Springs at Cruise Planners. We are a franchise company um, with franchise owners across the U.S. Um, don't let the name Cruise Planners fool you. We sell all kinds of travel, including land and all-inclusive resorts. We are top sellers for all of our partners. Um, we're celebrating two milestones lately this year. One is it is our 30-year anniversary. So started in 1994 by Michelle Fee, who's our founder and CEO and former travel advisor herself. Um, we're also celebrating a recent review of ranking 99% satisfaction rate from Franchise Business Review, which we are so proud of because number one, it's feedback from our, our franchise owners. And also because our number one priority at Cruise Planners is supporting our advisors. So we are so grateful that they feel the love and we feel the love back from them. Um, some of the ways we support them is through our business development with one-on-one -on -one strategy sessions to build business with an abundance of marketing, which is where I specialize in, abundance of marketing from direct mail to email and social media that we're gonna talk about today, technology that's designed by a travel agent for travel agents. So we know what our travel advisors need and design accordingly. And then what I think is one of our special ingredients is just really getting to know each of our advisors on a personal level. So it feels more like a partnership. So in addition to all the automated marketing that Cruise Planners does for our advisors, we also give our advisors tools to personalize and promote their businesses even further. And so you're going to hear about a very special advisor that does just that using the tools um, in his own way to build his business um, using YouTube. So a little trivia. Speaking of YouTube, did you all know a fun fact? 
how YouTube started. Did you know that it started as a dating site and it launched on Valentine's Day in 2005 as a dating site? And apparently people felt a little skittish about putting their personal videos on social media. Imagine that. <laughs> Look at us today. <laughs> We're filming everything. Um, today, as you, many of you know, it's the second most visited website in the world. Um, and it can be a viable strategy for you as a travel advisor is if you post relevant videos that people want to watch that show firsthand travel experiences. And then if you take that one step further and use the analytics and the reporting that your, your headquarters, your own franchise, or that YouTube provides to convert lookers into bookers. That's what we all want out of this, right? So with that, I'm very excited to introduce Matt Hoffman, who is one of our travel advisors, owns a, he and his wife, Chelsea, own a franchise. They are live from Florida and Matt joined and Chelsea joined Cruise Planners in 2016, right, Matt? That is 2016, correct. 2016 and if any of you check out their social media channels, they are not only fun and full of personality, but they have become an effective sales tool. So with that, I'm happy to introduce Matt Hoffman. Thank you very much, Stacy. Yes. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for having us on. Having me on, unfortunately, Chelsea is a bit under the weather today. So it will just be myself, but I'm happy to join you, happy to provide hopefully some insight, answer any questions uh, that anyone may have, and, and just kind of give a little bit of a peek behind the curtain of using social media, particularly in our case, YouTube, to advance your travel agency and advance your sales. So I'm very excited about this. Yeah, awesome. Thank you, Stacey. Matt, we're so excited to have you. Uh, we're going to kick it off with some introductions for the background. But first, I'm going to ask Tom to just drop the, the link to your and your wife's channel into the chat so, so people have some reference about what we're talking about. But Matt, I know uh, Chelsea mentioned, uh, Stacey mentioned you started in 2016. I'm just curious to set the stage. What was your background before you started your agency? Did you have a industry uh, and years of experience and things like that? Uh, kind of yes, but mostly no. So Chelsea was a, an elementary school teacher, brick and mortar. And then we actually ended up both doing some teaching virtually online, English to children in other countries. Uh, I graduated with a degree in hospitality management from University of Central Florida. And then I worked at the Walt Disney World Resort for about four and a half years while I was wrapping up college. And then, you know, a couple of years after that. Um, and then it was just kind of odds and ends jobs uh, after that. So no real experience as a travel advisor or with utilizing social media whatsoever. The, the closest parallel obviously being working at Disney, having a degree in hospitality. And we did like to travel ourselves as much as we could, but it wasn't a uh, you know, formal resume, so to speak, of, of travel advisor related experience. So we, we were pretty green coming in. So what was the motivation for starting an agency? Like, I know the conversation is always that this is a leap of faith getting this industry. Um, what was what was sort of the impetus for looking at uh, agency opportunities? Yeah, so it's it's interesting. It was actually kind of wanting to have a shift personally in our personal lives and wanting to spend more time together. As I mentioned, we kind of transitioned. Uh, we were working brick and mortar schools and we were teaching online. We wanted to be... Uh, home together more. We wanted to hopefully work together if we could, but just overall spend more time together. And I had always valued the hopeful opportunity of being my own boss or running my own business one day. And so it, it just kind of sparked from there. What can we do to be together more, spend more time together, tra hopefully travel more was one of the things that we had in mind. And I honestly was completely oblivious to the travel agent world. I didn't know that was something that still existed at the time. I started doing research on work from home opportunities, you know, owning your own business opportunities, franchise opportunities. And as soon as you start doing research on franchising, Cruise Planners is going to come right up at the top of the list. And I'm so glad that it did. So that was kind of like, a, okay, yes, this is something we could do. We think this is something we would definitely have interest in doing and discussing with people and you know taking part in ourselves so we did more research looked into it and pulled the trigger decided that was what we wanted to do and and haven't looked back ever since um and then eight years in eight years or so in i'm just curious what type of travel do you sell now do you have a specialty 
what what kind of uh do you categorize or you can see in any one kind of segment at all yeah so it's kind of uh evolved over time and of course as stacy mentioned cruise planners is not just cruises we do all kinds of things but for our agency the focus is actually on cruises when we started uh we wanted to have a focus on theme parks for me having worked there and us traveled there so much but as time went on and as our business grew and evolved, we just realized that maybe wasn't the best fit for us personally and our cruise videos. So kind of organically as we started YouTube, which I know we're going to get to all of that, it, those videos just took off. Those were the ones that performed the best. So we kind of transitioned more into doing cruises. I think because of our personalities and our stylization, we do attract more families. So we were kind of tuned into the family oriented cruise lines. And then we do have some all-inclusive resort sales, um, specifically with sandals slash beaches, sandals with their adults only and beaches with their families, um, because we just actually organically developed a good partnership with them that started with them discovering our YouTube channel. So for us, it's it's mostly, I think you could wrap it up by saying kind of family-friendly oriented experiences, mostly cruises, some all-inclusive resorts. Awesome. Um, all right, so we're gonna let's jump into YouTube now. And again, if anyone has questions, please drop them in the chat. And again, the link to Hoffman Happy Travels is in the chat there too. If you want to check it out. Um, but Matt, like we spoke early in the week just to sort of get an introduction, touch base. It was interesting when I asked you where the idea for YouTube came from. You said there was like a very specific problem that you had geographically that you wanted to solve, and YouTube sort of provided the perfect opportunity to do that. And I was hoping you could share that with with everyone as well. Yeah, absolutely. So we live in a very rural area. There's not a lot of people around. It's a lot of farmland and there's not a lot of disposable income here locally. So when you try to get people to spend money on travel, that is typically considered a luxury for a lot of people who don't have a lot of disposable income. So our traditional methods of advertising were completely unsuccessful. Very, very bad. We had nothing from them, whether that was local uh, specialized magazines being passed out. We did a couple local trade show kind of things. It just wasn't generating the business that we hoped it would. And so our business was floundering for the first, I'd say, one or two years. We just really were not getting any traction. We weren't getting going. We started YouTube. And that was a whole discussion and a process. But the idea was that we could show people what they were going to be doing when they traveled. You know, we can answer questions all day about it. We can give our opinions. But if you can actually see it before you go there, you have an idea of what you're getting into that can help alleviate concerns, alleviate stress, help people feel more calm and relaxed and excited for their trip. And then I think it also tends to make them have a better trip. You're not going to have as much bad feedback or poor feedback from people because they got into a situation they weren't aware of. They've seen it ahead of time. So that was kind of the, the organic brain thought there behind starting YouTube. And it ended up solving that problem of us being geographically located in an area that we could not develop a lot of sales because we ended up reaching a far, far larger audience to where now we have clients all over the country, some into Canada. We do have people reaching out from all over the world that we we personally are not able to you know book their travels, but they do reach out, they watch the video. So it, it solved that problem completely. And to now YouTube, I always say YouTube is the lifeblood of our business now. That's our sole form of advertising. That's all we do to advertise. And we've gone from nothing. I mean, just, you know, pennies to now being part of the millionaires club which is a, a cruise planners accolade that we are very proud to have to reach that top level of success there so it, it really did solve that initial problem but then gave us the huge boost that we needed overall yeah so i have a lot of questions about the specifics but i'm just curious like matt when you're starting out on youtube you're looking for clients um like the internet's a big place obviously <laughs> what uh what were your expectations initially starting? I mean, were there were there other channels that you saw doing something similar that you thought maybe this is something we could replicate? Or was this sort of a total leap of faith? Like, like I guess, like starting the agency in general? Yeah, and I mean, that's a good parallel because it, it exactly is that. It was a huge leap of faith. It, it, it wasn't as much as starting the business because there's a lot more on the line with that. It, it's You're not really risking anything by starting YouTube. So there is that to consider, but we did not watch 
travel YouTube and still really dull. Honestly, it's, it's just not something we've ever been tuned into. But I think that's a good thing because we didn't want to mimic other creators, even unintentionally. I think you can do that sometimes where if you're just watching someone you really like and then you go to do something in the same field, you might start emulating what they do, whether you're intending to or not. So I think that was actually a benefit for us to not have watched no, no cruise videos, no real travel vloggers, nothing like that. Um, we were familiar with YouTube. Of course, we used it for other methods of learning or researching things, but not really so much in that segment. And so to answer your other question about the kind of the initial thought or, you know, what our expectations were, mine were incredibly low. And I mean, Chelsea's were a little bit higher was her idea, but we both agreed to do it. But I, I, I told you before earlier in the week, I, I'll say it again, that my favorite story is that it's the most incorrect I've ever been about anything in my life, because I said, I don't think anyone will book with us. I don't think people will see someone on the internet and want to book with them, but hopefully we can join the YouTube partner program and maybe make a little cash flow on the side. And I was completely wrong about that. And I'm so glad to be that people actually saw the videos and it knocked down a lot of those barriers of entry for utilizing a travel advisor because people were getting to feel like they knew us before they ever reached out just from watching the videos. And again, bringing that peace of mind about what they were going to be doing while they were traveling was also bringing a peace of mind about working with us because they kind of felt like, again, they knew who we were, or maybe got a vibe check of, of what we were about and so that was one of our goals from the very beginning is, hey, we don't know what the success level of this is going to be, but we're going to give it our best effort. And the main thing is we're going to be genuine. We're going to be honest. We're going to be ourselves. And that's always one of the biggest pieces of advice I give to anyone who's going to jump into the YouTube realm or social media realm is you can only pretend to be someone else for so long. You don't want to do that. You want to attract the audience who wants to watch you or who wants to work with you, that is going to serve you best in the long run. And maybe you won't see those gigantic numbers that others have had, but you will see long-term sustained success that grew organically from sort of like a grassroots movement kind of thing. Awesome. Um, all right. So let, let's take it back, I guess, to the beginning, to the earlier days. Um, you're ready to get into this. I mean, what what was the what were the early content ideas you had? I mean, I know you had a plan coming into it, or you had ideas of, about coming into YouTube and producing a certain kind of content. But what were sort of the early ideas you had about videos you thought would be able to, you know, bring consumers into your world? Yeah. So at that point, with with having you know just started our business, our personal funds were not very robust, so we were not traveling to the extent that we wanted to or being able to create content perhaps to the extent that we wanted to. So it really started with let's film what we're doing. We're going to be doing it anyways. Let's film it. Even if it was something that maybe we didn't have the largest intent to sell or, or the expectation that it would sell, but whatever we were doing, we were going to film it. And it started very basic. I think the first five to 10 videos on the channel are just kind of three minute montage clips of what we were doing during that trip. And then we kind of knew that people did something called vlogging where they were on camera talking and recording and, you know, doing speaking to the camera as they were doing things. And we thought, okay, we have a little bit of a theater background. We're comfortable with this. I think it's something that we could do. And so let's give that a shot. And then as we did that, we found that we were also kind of filming enough to where we could start doing tour videos of the respective cruise ship we were on or the room we were staying in or the all-inclusive resort we were visiting. So it kind of just grew again organically is the words that's going to keep coming up here. It just kind of grew organically from there to where it was like, let's film what we're doing, but let's also show where we're doing it, how we're doing it, kind of the logistics of the operation. And, it, and then it just took off from there. And then you start getting feedback and analytics from YouTube where you can look to it and say, oh, this did well. These kind of videos do well. These maybe not so much. Let's focus on that. And so to go back to the earlier point of what we sell now, right, with the focus on family-oriented cruise lines or sandals and beaches for all-inclusive resorts, it, it, it just took off from seeing those videos do well and then the kind of videos we do also based on that and, and seeing how they performed. Yeah, I never considered that too. That's an, is another data point you can use in order to make a business decision. The, the the interest or the views you have on YouTube too seems like seems like something that would really play well into trying to figure out what kind of travel you want to sell. 
Yeah, exactly. So you can kind of get an idea of what people are into, what they're enjoying, you know, what seems like it might uh, do well for people in their own travel. So you're, you're, it's just instantaneous feedback, really, all, all the time from different angles. And then you're able to adjust your whole business perspective from that. And then they kind of start feeding each other, which is awesome. I mean, that's really what you want to where, hey, now you're making videos, maybe you're making a little bit of money from them. Those are starting to drive clients to your business. The more clients you drive to your business, the more revenue you generate, the more travel you can go on, the more things you can film. And it just starts stacking like that. Um, all right. So how starting out, how quickly did it catch on? Did the channel start bringing in viewers? Like I imagine, I don't know, actually, I can't imagine. But what, what, I mean, what was the, what was the process for driving traffic to a channel? And how patient did you have to be at first? Not as patient as we thought, which was great. Uh, I, I mean, I would caution that you should be because a lot of the YouTubers or content creators, social media influencers that you see, you know, they're the 1% that have all the all the big numbers. But it actually was surprisingly faster than we thought. And one of my other favorite stories I'll tell very quickly is that we had our first ever trip to Disneyland planned for September of 2018. And we started the channel in, I think, August of 2017. So what we were hoping for was that we would have 100 subscribers, you know, almost a year later by the time that we went on that Disneyland trip. And we ended up having a thousand by the time we went on that trip. So and that was never in our wildest dreams an achievable number. Uh, but it does. It does take still patience and dedication to doing it. If you're not posting consistently, if you're not creating content, you're not going to drive people to views. You're not going to drive people to your business, more importantly. And so it, it takes time to build a viewership base, to grow in the YouTube analytics enough that your your videos are getting suggested and recommended to other viewers but then as any advisor here can attest to that it's a whole different thing to get people to actually be your client as a travel agent. So when we're talking in that realm, you have to be incredibly patient with it to pay off. But as far as YouTube yeah. starting to generate interest and get going, it, it can be quicker than you would think, but I would caution patients and, and advise that. Yeah. Um, all right. So I guess creating content that's going to help grow an audience is something that every media company is trying to figure out. Like TMR, we're trying to figure it out too. Um, You've mentioned, Matt, you said post consistently is a good tip and uh, be genuine is a good tip. But any other tips about, you know, if, if people hear your story are inspired and want to maybe follow a similar road, any tips about growing an audience or pushing subscribers or just, you know, getting bigger on YouTube in general? Yeah, it, it will sound counterintuitive, but I'm dead serious when I say don't focus, don't hyper focus on the numbers. Don't worry so much about those. Figure out what your long term goal is and see how you're doing achieving that. And what I mean is when anyone starts a YouTube channel, everyone knows about subscribers with YouTube, right? That's what I everyone taught when they find out we do a YouTube. Oh, how many subscribers do you have? Look, for, to be honest, subscribers is mostly a vanity number. That is just kind of that upfront, it's your handshake, it's your smile. This is who I am, first impression kind of thing. But that actually isn't the biggest metric when it comes to determining your overall viewership and you know your, your monetization and things like that. So I think when you're starting out, try not to focus on, oh, I have this number or I want to get to this number. Oftentimes you'll end up just disappointed, or even if you do hit the goals you had, you will start to kind of quickly slide your expectations to where you feel like you're constantly trying to achieve something else. So I think it's it's good to try to be measured with it and say, my goal isn't to have this many subscribers. My goal is to drive this much viewership through the channel to this amount of business, something more along those lines. And the other tip I would give is to remain focused on yourself in your channel. Try not to compare yourself to others because that's really never going to do you any good. It can do a lot of harm and we witness that with others. You don't need to focus on what other people are doing. Just do things yourself, give it your best effort, be honest and genuine, like I said, and, and see what the feedback tells you, see what the analytics tell you, and, and then go based off of that, not so much what others are doing. And then one last final quick thing is people always ask about equipment. Do I need to go out and buy a bunch of fancy equipment? I would not. Most people have one of these, a smartphone nowadays, yeah. and it has a great camera on it. And that's really 
all you need for most things you're going to be starting to do. I, we talked about this earlier in the week, but I'll tell everyone here now, try to get it as stable as you can, your video, and try to make sure your audio is, is decent. It's listenable. It doesn't have a bunch of wind noise or something like that in it. And that right there is a baseline you can ride for a long time. Now, as you get more successful, if you want to expand your editing or you want to get better equipment, by all means, but just to get started, you can, if you can hit those couple of baseline things, you'll be good to go. All right. And then I guess just to finish that thought, Matt, because you brought it up, but the equipment you mentioned you have now, aside, you have uh, a gimbal for your phone you mentioned, and then you have a couple mics that would help improve the audio a little bit, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yep, that's yeah. exactly right. And and the gimbal, we only I only use when I'm doing like a ship tour, when I'm going to be filming for hours, three or four hours, walking around an entire ship, showing everything. Honestly, it just helps me, not even so much with stabilization. The phones are so great at that, but just to make sure I'm not turning too quickly or something, it just, it will help you keep paced and measured. And then the mics are great because they obviously will improve audio quality. We don't even use those on our, you know, vlogs or daily videos. The, the built-in audio typically is fine. But for us, you know, when we're on a cruise ship, I mentioned this before, there's a lot of wind. Or if you're at an all-inclusive resort with a beach, there's a lot of wind. And wind will kill audio quicker than anything else. So having a nice mic with a with a wind muff on it will do you wonders in that regard. All right. So we have a ton of questions in the chat. We're going to hopefully tackle these one at a time. And then I have also a lot more for you, Matt, too. Let's do um, it. So this is one I wanted to ask as well. Um, I know video editing is a skill. I know it's uh, something a lot of people train formally for. I know a lot of people train informally as well. It's also something that seems kind of intimidating if you haven't done it before. I'm, I'm curious, what was the situation with video editing, Matt? Like Amy asks, do you edit your own videos and how much time do you dedicate it if you do? Yeah, so we do edit our own videos. Chelsea does all of the editing. Editing, I've never done any of it, so <laughs> she would be a, a bit better to speak to that. But we're we're in tune enough that I can definitely answer the question. So uh, she self taught that she had no background in video editing when we started this. She basically went on and oh, we have a thunderstorm. Welcome to Florida, virtually for everyone who's not aware. Hopefully, we stay on here. Uh, that was a loud boom, but. Uh, she was self-taught with that. So when we started, she just started doing research about how to video edit and, you know, what programs were best. I think we utilized whatever we had initially, which I believe was iMovie, just because we tend to use Mac products, uh, but then have now switched over to Adobe Premiere. Um, and she just, you know, would watch YouTube videos or read website blogs. All right. Um... So Matt might have frozen for a bit if the thunderstorms were correct. We'll 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 give him a second to come back on. But I know there, Matt, are you I think you can yeah, you're all yeah, good. Yeah, here Matt. we go. Sorry yeah. about that. No, go ahead. You were just talking about uh Adobe Premiere and uh Chelsea learning how to video edit. Yeah, so completely self-taught on that, just did research by watching YouTube videos or reading website post about how to utilize it and how to how to use the system and it can be quite intimidating when you get started even for someone who's really into tech i like tech stuff i look at a video editing software and go what is all of this it, it can be quite intimidating but luckily when you get started if you're doing basic editing basic cuts and stuff a lot of these programs will kind of walk you through it it's a lot more intuitive than it used to be so getting started, I wouldn't let it scare you off. Just dedicate some time to try and to learn it, and you should be good to go. Um, yeah, and I, he, so somebody asked, he mentioned iMovie. He mentioned Adobe Premiere now. I know iMovie is the free software that comes with Mac. I you know a lot of people use CapCut, which has a free version too, and that's like TikTok, but it also has a de desktop version that you can edit longer videos. So there's a lot of – I don't think anyone's discriminatory when it comes to uh, video editing software. Um all right. So we have another question, Matt. I guess when you were gone, you were mentioning what you post. Um, one guest asked any suggestions on what else you might be of interest other than posting about where you go. He or she says, I have a channel, but haven't had a chance to go on any trips yet. I mean, do you, you post, you and Chelsea post exclusively vacation or, or trip content, or do you do like daily day of the life sort of things like that? So it's majority trip based content. Um, we don't do personal videos of any kind but to answer the the question there you can definitely do content that's not uh on location kind of stuff a perfect example is is just whether it be advice or kind of a here's five things you need to know or uh what to not do before your cruise what i wish i would have known before i went to my first all-inclusive resort all of those things can be filmed 
in your home, a home office or in a nice location. Is it better if you have what we call B-roll, kind of the shots of the place you're talking about? Sure. I mean, just to kind of break it up, it makes it a little bit more interesting, but you can put little clips or a uh, little art or whatever up above and superimpose it over your video. And I do that. I have a recurring series called TA Talk, Travel Agent Talk, uh, that I've done probably, I don't know, 12 to 15 videos in that series now where I just as my day in the life of a travel agent, I keep seeing these questions repeated with these issues coming up over and over again. So I'll make a video dedicated about that. Here's the number one mistake people are making when booking their cruise, or here's what you need to know about cruise line promotions, whatever it might be. So you can do that content from anywhere. Yeah, I, ideally you would have content from on location, but you don't have to. You can certainly do things from home. All right. Um, again, a lot of questions coming in, Matt. So I'm going to keep grabbing them um, until Let's maybe we're, we're, yeah. Heather messaged me. She says, "What does you what do you consider to be consistent content? How how often should I post a video, and how long should they be for the best engagement?" Yeah. So, and that and that's a. I'm really glad someone asked that question because we're actually kind of the the uh, statistical outlier in that regard in terms of how long it should be. Because we, you'll hear if you start reading advice or watching advice on how to do YouTube, a lot of people would say keep the content short. And I think that's becoming truer and truer by the day. We're getting a lot more short form content, whether it be YouTube shorts, Instagram reels, TikTok, what have you. But with that said, we will put out videos that are an hour and a half long. If I'm doing a ship tour, I'm going to show it in detail. I'm going to show every deck, every public area. And those tours, if we're talking those larger new cruise ships that are coming out, those videos will be about an hour and a half long. People will watch them, though, because they want to know the details. They want to have it planned out. They don't want any surprises. Now, certain people are going to go, that's way too much. I just want an overview and they're going to watch someone else. So that kind of goes back to catering to the audience that you want. You know, you're not going to be able to please everyone. Uh, but in terms of how consistent you should post, I think that is just a question you'll have to answer for yourself. I don't overdo it. That's, that's the thing. A lot of people will say post every day. Yes, if you can post every day and the content is good, it can't be bad content. If you can post every day, that will definitely help you. The more you post, that's going to boost your analytics. That's going to boost you in the algorithm for YouTube or whatever social media um, avenue you're utilizing. But the thing is, you don't want to press yourself. If you're busy running a travel agent business, it's going to take a lot of time to get that content out. So if you can, just try to commit yourself to a consistent schedule that works best for you, whether that's I'm going to do a, a video a month or I'm going to do a video every week or I'm going to do two every week. Figure out what you feel like you can accomplish and do well and then just try to stick to that. It's it's not a hard, fast thing, but if you try to stick to that, it will do you better. Yeah, I, I'm a YouTube I'm a YouTube consumer and I know that like you mentioned, Matt, like there's super successful channels, some that post every day. I think there was a couple of channels that grew because of a promise to post every day and uh, a couple of posts like once in a while and they still all do very well. They've all built very unique audiences. So like you mentioned, I think it's up to the channel, but staying consistent seems like a big deal. Um, all right. So here's a question from Sheila. This is sort of another technical question. And then we have one more from Jessica, which is another technical question. But Sheila asks, does it matter if you're recording from the front or the rear camera? I assume when you're using your phone to record. Yeah, absolutely. Great question. And it will depend on what you're doing and what, what specific device you're using. Generally speaking, I would recommend using the rear camera. Uh, I have an iPhone, but you know, most smartphones, the, the rear camera is going to be far superior to the front camera. Um, just, just on the technical specs of it. So you can yeah. definitely utilize it and they are getting better all the time. And every model that comes out, um, if you're trying to use, you know, kind of a selfie, uh, facing shot. So we'll often do shots where we're walking and talking, then maybe you want to use the front camera. So, you know, you have yourself in frame. I'm so used to it now that I know how to hold it for the back camera, even though I'm not getting that visual feedback, but I, I just know where to hold it to get us in the shot. Uh, but overall, I would recommend using the back camera more. Yeah, we 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 ran a informative session when one of our conferences about shooting with your phone, and the photographer mentioned that as well. Always, even if you're doing a selfie, using the back camera is always the better idea. Um, and then I cannot find the name, but I know someone also asked Matt about mics uh, in general if they were going to invest in one. Any any like brand or anything you can recommend or anything any any words of wisdom there. 
Yeah, sure. So there's a lot of great options and, and you can get different things like certain companies will make, uh, we have one of these actually, a little mic that'll plug right in to the end of your phone here and it just kind of sticks out and you can pivot it different directions. So that's an option. What we use now is Rode. Some people say Rode, R-O-D-E. Um, we have the, I forget what it's called now. It's the Go, I think. And there's basically you have a a receiver that plugs into your device and then it comes with two it's those square ones you always see a lot of people wearing um it comes with two of those mics and it's really great because you don't have to be right next to the device that's filming so we you can split off and go different directions and be in a different room or whatever and it's still picking up that audio um i we just got those because they were really really well reviewed and we found that those kill the wind excellently we have zero issues with wind utilizing those mics and their uh muffs on top all right. um all right so we'll have a few minutes at the end too for any other questions for matt um i know they were coming in pretty quickly so if i missed yours don't be shy go ahead and drop it back in there again um but matt we've been talking so much about growing an audience filming videos things like that how does this and i know this is maybe a simple very simple question but how are you actively using this to benefit sales for your travel agency? Like how are you converting your audience on YouTube into a uh, client in your travel agency? Yeah. And so I kind of touched on the first step of that, right? Which is people watching the videos and feeling more at ease with us and, and wanting to work with us, kind of not feeling like you're just dealing with a stranger. It's not really a cold call kind of situation. You're already building a rapport and you're already coming across as informed because you're, you know, what for at least for the style of videos that we do, we're we're demonstrating what we're doing and we're showing people things and we're giving tips and we're saying, here's how you check in, here's how you get your room key, whatever it might be, all sorts of things. So it starts there and people watch the videos and typically it can kind of be a combination where our best performing videos are our tour videos. Like I mentioned, doing a whole ship tour, doing a whole resort tour. Those will drive the most numbers because it, it applies to the most people. But once they see that, they go, okay, this is great. This is informational. They start watching the vlogs and then they see us just being ourselves, having fun, cutting up, but also providing information. And that gives them that sense of rapport and that you know feeling of ease of, about maybe approaching us to work. So then they'll reach out. We always mention at the end of our videos, we don't Anyone, you can do it however you want. Our personal choice was to not be pushy. We did not want that salesperson oriented video. Those can do very well if you know how to do them. It just wasn't something we were comfortable with. We didn't want to say, hey, 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 travel agents, book with us, book with us. We did not want to do that. We wanted to have what felt like a very natural video and viewing experience of, I want to learn about the ship, so I'm watching it. So then at the end, we'll say, we hope you found this informational and helpful. We are travel agents. We'd love to assist you. Please feel free to reach out via our travel agent information. We always put it in the description of every one of our videos so that people have it easily accessible, tangible, they can read it, what have you. So then they'll reach out, whatever method they prefer, email or phone or text, whatever it is. And we'll just go from there. Most of the time they come in, they're not very hesitant. They say, hey, I love your videos. I want to book this and we'll get off and running. Some people say, I've never worked with a travel advisor before. I don't even, I didn't even know this was a thing. Talk me through it. And so you just kind of have to develop that rapport and that spiel of, of being able to say, well, here, here's how it works. Here's what we're going to do. And it puts them at ease. And, and another thing that's really been beneficial for us is the art of transferring bookings. So we'll get people, we we realized this over time, we would get a lot of people who said, oh man, I just booked my cruise. I went on to do research. I found your videos. I wish I would have known about you. I would have booked through you instead of just booking direct with the cruise line. Well, depending on the vendor, you can transfer your booking to a travel agent within a certain amount of time. And that's absolutely free. So then we started throwing that in at the end as well. Hey, if you've recently booked, you can transfer to us. And so we get a lot of people doing that. And then that get you off and running on those relationships as well. Um. All right. I want to, so I, I saw a question about other social medias in the chat. I want to grab too, but Alice basically asks is she, the, are we going to learn how to actually start a YouTube channel? Alice, this is a question about sort of opening a YouTube account, Alice, like Matt, that's a pretty simple thing to do. You just need an email address. It's like any other social media 
website, yeah. really. It, yeah. And it'll walk you through it. I mean, when you go on to do it, you know, it'll tell you what information you need and, and how what, what you have to put in and how you're going to register and all this stuff. And and at least, uh, I haven't looked at that stuff in quite a long time, but at least as we were going through it, once you get to certain steps, certain features become available to you. So you'll be able to take your time with it. And a good example of that, I know at least when we did it, it was once you hit 100 subscribers, you could have that personalized URL. So instead of youtube.com slash 8GH7962, you know, it was youtube.com slash Hoffman Happy Travels or whatever yeah. you choose. So it'll take a little bit of time. You'll do things in, in, in a step fashion, but it is pretty, pretty self-explanatory. Yeah, I think that's a thousand. I think that's a thousand subscribers now, Matt. If I'm, if I remember correctly. Um, but yeah, but it is. It's 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 really easy. YouTube, which is owned by Google, makes it as easy as possible and as obvious as possible. So I don't think. Uh, yeah, I don't think that should ever be a hurdle for you. And Go and ahead. real quick, just to dovetail off of that good point mentioning Google, the once you hopefully become a partner, right? You join the YouTube Partner Program. That means that you're monetized and you're earning money for your content that is all handled pretty much automatically through Google AdSense. They're the ones that do all that, and it's fully integrated into your videos. Now, again, as you get bigger, you have more say about where you might want to display ads or what kind of ads, but they kind of take care of all that, and it's a lot easier to set up. I've done websites in the past, and trying to integrate that, even with Google AdSense, is more difficult than doing it through YouTube. They take care of most everything for you. Um, all right, so Matt, I asked you this earlier in the week, and I thought your answer was really surprising, but something that made sense when you explained it. But I, it just seems like we're in this world, twenty twenty four short short form video, short form video seems to be dominating advertising think pieces and stuff like that. Um, I I was asking you if you guys did a lot of short form video too, and your answer was that's not really up our alley. Like that's not really where our audience are finding us. Yeah, that's exactly right. And I totally get it. And I totally acknowledge it. It's 100% true. That is where a lot of social media is heading or already arrived is the short form content. Again, YouTube shorts, Instagram reels, TikTok, whatever it is. Uh, but I would caution that that can generate a lot of views very quickly, and maybe even generate a lot of followers or subscribers. But again, are those people going to watch all of your content or watch it through? So you have to be careful with that, getting into mixed media. If you gather a large audience from shorts, but then you start doing hour long, long form content, are those people gonna watch that? Probably not. And then that can actually be very detrimental to your analytics because your click-through ratio is small. And I'll try not to get into too much technical jargon there, but basically, the more your video is shown to people, the more they click on it, the better it is for you. If you have a lot of people seeing it who love short stuff and now you're doing long form, they're probably not going to click on it. But for us as a business too, and I think this is probably what will apply to most people here in the session as travel advisors, you're doing this because you want to drive business, right? You want to drive new clients to your business. Is it possible to do that through short form content? Absolutely. But I think it's probably a lot more challenging than the long form content because you're not able to make that connection via video, put people at ease, provide them with as much information. You can do some, you can maybe make them laugh, but are they gonna come through and book with you? And I think you also have to take a look at demographics then of age ranges and things like that, of who utilize or who views short form content more so than long form content, at least in our experience, the age ranges and demographics that are booking travel tend yeah. to still focus on the long form stuff. It's it's usually the younger audiences that like the short form and they're not booking as much travel. Now that will change at some point. I don't know when, so you might want to be flexible with that. But don't feel like, again, that you have to do what everyone else is doing or you have to follow someone else's lead. Just because everyone else is doing short form, that's a perfect chance for you to stand out in long form. And our ship tours are great. Again, a great example of that. There's one or two other creators, maybe more that do those long ship tours detail, but most people will give you the highlights. And so ours kind of stands out. It's not going to be for everyone, but for who it is, it's very beneficial and then lets them come to our business as well. So feel free to do what you feel the most comfortable with. If you want to do short form content, I'm not saying to avoid that. I'm just saying to keep in mind what comes with that and don't just follow the crowds. Yeah, and Matt, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but it seems like the the ship tours might be what people are searching, and then they find you organically because they want a tour of Utopia of the Seas, and you're obviously providing it, and then they get to know you a little bit through your 
all their videos through the vlogging, things like that. They sort of form a relationship with you that they take and they feel comfortable with book, book and travel with you guys too. Is that, was, is that a, is that a good way to put it? That is, that's a very good way to summarize it. Your, your search engine results, right? Search engine optimi optimization, SEO, what people are typing in on Google, on YouTube that they're looking for and how many, how many of those, how many of your videos or your content is going to match up with that? So typically people are not searching for specified things. It does happen. Most people are searching for broader terms. Like you said, utopia of the sea. They are putting in a ship name because they are going on that ship and they want to know about it. That's why the tours tend to hit more because that's what that video is dedicated to. It is all about that ship. But then now, okay, you watched our tour. Our vlogs might start getting suggested now from when we were on that ship. And now you're watching that. So it tends to hopefully waterfall for you in, into them viewing more of your content and then reaching out to work with you. Um, all right. So I saw some more questions come in. We'll grab those. We have five, five, between five and 10 minutes left. Um, Samantha has a question and this, I guess, go might be a more Chelsea question, Matt, but I imagine you, you could provide some wisdom here. Samantha asks, what are you looking to focus on when you're editing your video specifically? Like, is there anything you really want your viewers to see? You want to kind of tell them the, sto the story that you're trying to tell, right? And so honestly, the best advice we can probably give you with editing is to think about your video and how it's going to be edited while you're filming it. That was something we had to learn the hard way where we would go on a ship and just film and film and film everything we did. Well, a lot of that's going to be left on the editing room floor. You're just going to end up taking a lot of that out because as I mentioned, yes, you can feel free to do longer content, but don't do it unnecessarily. You have to have a reason for doing that long content or people are not going to stay tuned into it. So I would say when you're thinking about editing, think about that while you're filming and say, what in, what's the title? This is what Chelsea does. What is the title of this video going to be when we post it? That's what you want to film. That should be your focus as you're filming it. And then as you're editing it, what best gives you that way or best tells that story that you're trying to tell or give the information that you're trying to give? And another quick tip is to make sure that your segments transition well. That's one thing that you'll lose a lot of people on and Chelsea's always done a very good job of this is you don't want to be saying, hey, we're here at the buffet, we're having breakfast and now I'm on a zip line. Like that, what? How did you get to the zip line? That doesn't make sense. So you want to make sure that you are transitioning well enough. There's different ways to do that, but have that be in mind as you're filming, that'll make your editing process go a lot smoother. So then it just becomes more technical. If there's any slip ups, if you had a, a goof, you didn't say something right, or you put in, you said incorrect information, you want to correct that. Now that's what editing really is. Just putting those clips in order, trimming them, clipping them, and finalizing the product. So I, I guess when, if you if you know you're going to be on a cruise ship inaugural, and are you, are you planning what type of video you want to make before you step on board, Matt? Is that how it goes then? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. The the longer we've done this, the more that has come to fruition, the more that's what we do. So we'll for, we'll take it back, right? January this year, Icon of the Seas, big brand new cruise ship, largest in the world. We were on the preview, one of the preview cruises and then the inaugural for that. So we had a game plan. We have a whiteboard here in the office and we wrote it all out. We said, okay, we know the ship tour. That's the obvious one. They're going to have rooms open for travel agents to go and view. This is something I would recommend too, by the way, go to those when you have those opportunities. And we're going to go in, we're going to film every one of those categories and put them together in a room tour compilation video. So we know we're going to have those. Then we're going to do our daily videos. What do we want those videos to focus on? Okay, day one, we want it to be first impressions. This is us on the ship. This is the first time we're seeing it. What's happening? What are we feeling? What are we experiencing it? And then we want more specified on those following days. On this day, let's talk about what is new to Icon that's not on other ships. On this day, let's go over the specialty dining. On this day, let's talk about what there might be for kids. And that can be incredibly beneficial. Again, going back to that last point of planning out, thinking about your video and how you're going to edit it while you're filming it, even taking it a step further and saying, yeah, let's plan out how we're going to do it. Now, us personally... We don't hyper plan and we don't script out what we're going to say and all those kind of things, but we do get the idea of 
this is today's video. This is this day's video. This is what we're going to cover here. And that will put you so much more at ease while you're actually doing it because you don't feel like you have to run around and get everything all the time. You have a plan of attack. Yeah. Um, and then I guess just going off of that, like my last technical question, plan, going back to planning, when you go, you go on a three-day, maybe inaugural, you get all this content, you get all these videos set up, and then you and Chelsea will plan on when you're going to release it. Like, you usually, you will slowly release those videos instead of, like, dump them all in your channel all at once. Yes. I think when we first started, I think our first cruise that we filmed in totality, I think we did drop them all at once just because we didn't maybe know any better. Uh, but ever since then, we do typically try to spread them out to, give again, give you that kind of consistent posting. Now, there are exceptions to that, right? So if it's an inaugural or preview, something brand new, maybe you want to get that tour out ASAP. Uh, maybe we'll drop that during the cruise. Or if there's a quick video that we can edit, like a little room tour or something and get that out. But then otherwise, it's typically once we're back from the trip and then we'll say, okay, on Tuesday, we want to post this. On Friday, we want to post that, whatever it might be. Um, okay, so before we got on, Stacy mentioned that her favorite video or one of the videos she introed introed with you was a twenty staying up twenty four hours on I forget what ship it was, Matt. It was it Utopia? It was Oasis. We did it on Oasis of the Seas, and then we did it on the Disney Dream, I think. So we've done yeah. it twice. I think a good example. It's like a very unique video, and like something that Stacy mentioned too is informative as well. It's not just entertaining. Um, I'm curious. Like you've done a lot of videos, Matt. I went through your channel this week. What? Is there any video that's your favorite? That's a good one for advisors leaving this call. And Tom, let's throw the link to Hoffman Happy Travels back in the chat too. Any single favorite video that would be good for people to watch to get intro to you and Chelsea and YouTube in general? Oh my gosh, that that that's a fantastic question. I would there's nothing that comes to mind initially as like, man, this was the one I will say depending on the perspective we're approaching the question from, I'd probably have a different answer, right? So okay. if you say, what what's the video that you were maybe like most proudest of, or you felt like you did the best on? That was the Disney Wish ship tour. I was so happy with how that tour came out. We got everything right away, full access to all the different areas. And I felt like I covered that ship just as good as you can cover something. So from that perspective, it would be that if you say, you know, maybe what was the most fun you guys had while making a video or enjoying something? Oh, there's been so much. I mean, it's hard, you know, when you're doing stuff like this, you're having a great time all the time. But maybe when we went to Europe, that was our first time going there. It was our 10th anniversary. That trip really sticks out. Um, watching wildlife in Alaska. So there's, there, I couldn't say there's a singular favorite. I feel like an actor or something right now. Like, no, 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 all my movies are the same. Like, I love them all. But uh, there's nothing that sticks out like that. And luckily there's nothing that really sticks out the other way either. Like that was the worst thing ever. So it's just a mix depending on the perspective we're approaching it from. So we're out of time. I see, I see a couple more questions popping in, but we're out of time. Um, Matt, I want to thank you so much again. It's something we wanted to do for so long. We couldn't have asked for a better guest for this. I really appreciate your time and thank you for all the information and really your candor too. It was it was a lot of fun talking to you. It was my pleasure. Thank you guys so much for having me and thanks to Cruise Planners. And uh, it was an absolute joy and I hope we were able to answer as many questions as possible. Hopefully you guys learned something from this and uh, I wish everyone the best in their endeavors, whether it be with just your travel agency or if you are thinking about starting up YouTube or other social media, good luck to you. Yeah, and then a last thank you too to Stacy. I see you're still with us. Stacy, thanks for thanks for sponsoring today's session. We really appreciate the partnership as well. Thank you for having me. Very I learned something new too, alongside all of you. So thanks. Great topic. Thanks, right. Matt. Thank you represented as well. <laughs> thank you. And thanks to uh thanks for everyone for coming out. Again, we'll be back in a few weeks. And if you want to rewatch the session, again, the last plug, you can find it on our YouTube, uh, hopefully later tonight, tomorrow morning. Um, but until then. Everyone stay safe, stay healthy, and uh, yeah, we'll see you all very soon.